I've been playing oh, no. this. Right. But all yep. of, all of 2023, I've been I've personally been playing and I've been teaching people about like this on chain economy stuff happening on you know BTC, Litecoin, Doge, BSV. So like, where does that fall into play with all of this? I mean, it's like a completely different universe. You know, it's like Bitcoin within crypto. It's it like is. B- and crypto I, I think within it's crypto. A ra- it's a, it's a I level it's of brand inception. New. I think- yeah, I think it's very exciting. I think people who are, you know, inscribing early are going to do well, especially those projects get listed on those evil centralized exchanges <laughs> that bring liquidity to your inscriptions. <laughs> uh, uh, so I think uh, if that happens, then uh, that's good for them. Uh, and uh, that probably takes us to our next topic, which is, you know, the inscriptions themselves and what's happening with that mining pool. <laughs> Sick, bro. Yeah, let's do that. Um, actually, later today I'm gonna be interviewing probably the most badass on uh on chain entrepreneur of 2023. I think he is actually he is the guy that like described Ordi to the T. His name is Army of Youth. Um, I'm interviewing him later on today. Maybe if you want to jump on and and shoot the shit with him, would you be down for that? Do you think you have time? I don't know. I think I might be at my limits after we finish this one. It all depends. Really? Yeah. Because because what we could do is cut this one short and come back later and do it with him. Shoot the shit with him. Yeah. I will have to see. I, I have to check in with other people that involve me in their lives right now. So <laughs> 9, 9 p.m. Eastern if you want to jump in. Okay. Do you, is that something you want to do or we can just have this conversation now or we can have it with him? No, let's have this conversation now and finish okay. this video because I've been itching to talk about this. So let's just get her done in case I can't make it later. Okay, so there's this guy on BTC who's a core dev who is actually the guy who audits every BIP, Bitcoin improvement proposal. Okay, his name is Luke Dasher, Luke Dash Jr., whatever his name is. He eats cats, literally self-professed cat eater. Okay, like literally, he literally says he eats cats. Okay, so just give you an understanding of who he is, right? He had he had a a, um, a Bitcoin mining uh, pool back in the day, like eleven years ago, where he would be putting like things that no one wanted on chain. Um, I don't remember exactly the details of this story, but either way, it was that religious. Just... It was a religious pool. Uh, a religious pool. No, religious wasn't what it was called. <laughs> I don't know. It was just he was just yeah, putting religious bullshit. religious fits into what stuff that he was putting into the into the blocks, but the, yeah, they, he was putting religious. religious stuff or something like that. Anyways, yeah. All right, so so, I'll, uh, in twenty twenty three, Casey Rodemore gave the world um, on chain an on chain economy by unveiling the Ordinals protocol on BTC. Big blockers like myself went into BTC and did what big blockers do, which is created markets using on-chain assets. Cool. Um, That was a fatal mistake for BTC, in my opinion. Um, BTC should have stopped Casey Rotomore right then and there. They should have stopped that. They, they, They should never have allowed that. The small blocker, Laser Eyes, should have never allowed that. And maybe for, for whatever reason, they didn't. And it got to the point that um, an on-chain economy grew in BTC that is now worth more in transaction volume than regular BTC transactions. To the point that BTC miners have started to realize that they make more money inscribing their own JSON, mining it, and selling it on chain in other words btc miners have come to realize that they have they make more money processing the transactions of inscriptions only and not btc transactions themselves they literally make more money by being first to market with an inscription series and then reselling it on secondary does that make sense so for example Mm -hmm. um for example the my this really started with bitmap after the bitmap after bitmaps were blacked out and now we're dealing with the creation of a bitmap as as soon as the block of time is is mined and there's a minor race that also happens 
to claim that bitmap of present time. So it, it added bitmap added to the Bitcoin mining reward. Well, what, a, what if any inscription series is part of the miner monetization strategy? At that point in time, uh, uh, a can of worms opened up where miners have now realized that it's just more profitable to mine JSON, to mine inscriptions on chains. Yep. So we're at the so out of so then finally at the end of 2023, the small blocker um a sect within BTC, the, the laser eyes, they started to freak out. And they're they've been freaking out. And they started attacking not just ordinals, but also samurai wallet. Out of nowhere. Samurai yeah, wallet. That's the one that's the one that really got me. Like, what the fuck? So so now they're attacking samurai wallet, which is like the people in BTC who are doing their best to protect um end users in the area of privacy, which is kind of like the antithetical um in, like embrace of BTC to that of, of ordinals because ordinals really makes it even more um non fun more uh, non fungible right like every sat now is colored and so have you been following the samurai story closely because that story i have not i mean i mean definitely i have been following it closely and the thing about samurai wallet is that uh, in order for you to achieve that privacy as an user you're working with other users to uh, essentially uh, mix and match your Bitcoin in a single transaction and then get the coins mixed back. Now, when you do that, uh, there are fees to be paid and there are quite a lot of fees. Fees that uh, make it very worthwhile for miners to mine those uh, whirlpool transactions that perform that function. Right. So those whirlpool transactions are also a desirable source of revenue for miners in addition to just transactions and block rewards. So there's that side of the equation in addition to you know all the other on-chain stuff you talked about. Uh, BTC has like all these new revenue streams uh, that miners need to be mining. And then enter <laughs> Luke Dash Jr. and the stupid ocean mining pool. <laughs> Which, you know, let's, let's be honest, dude. It's not really Luke Dasher. Luke Dasher is kind of like the useful idiot. The re the reality mm -hmm. is that this is Jack Dorsey, the the founder of Twitter. He's really behind Ocean. He's really funding it. He's just using, like Luke Dasher is the, is a, is a dumb fall guy. Like yeah. that's really what's happening here. So as as you were saying, so let's say what they're censoring. For well, first and foremost, they're censoring the size, the required size for inscriptions to happen, but also the samurai whirlpool mixes to occur. So those transactions don't get processed by the ocean pool, which means if you're a miner uh, with your hardware and you point your mining equipment at that pool, you're missing out on all the revenue. So why would you use it? <laughs> there's like the first the first step. Why would you ever use it? But yeah, second I, there's of a all, meme for that. There's a meme for that. I want to show you guys. You were saying? Yeah. Uh, second of all, that pool is also enforcing uh, OFAC uh, blacklists uh, so that certain Bitcoin addresses cannot spend things uh, on the transactions they want to make. So if you are banned by some three-letter agency, if your wallet is banned, Ocean will add your wallet address to that list and not mind the transactions you make out of your wallet. And there's the meme right there. Ordinals are a bug. What's the fix? I'm going to beg miners to lose money. <laughs> like, really? You're going to beg miners to lose money? That's stupid. Yeah. These guys are just grasping at straws now. Um, mm. Peter Todd was the at response. The response has been nice. The response has been really nice. I got to say, Samurai Wallet came out and took out the Samurai Sword, and their nice. hash rates went down the tubes, <laughs> which is nice. really beautiful to watch. Nice. Hopefully they go bankrupt and they can just turn off. <laughs> yeah, dude, they're just megalomaniacs at this point. Like at this point, the, there's a clear path to Bitcoin scaling. It's on chain. 
It, 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 there's no other way. And the Lightning Network is a dud. Three of the top <laughs> devs came out this year and said it's one of them said it was a scam. The other one did a whole op ed on GitHub explaining how this is never going to fulfill anything worthwhile that they deem to be. The creator of Drive Chains literally, it, all he does is point out how he's speaking at Anarchopoco, by the way. Um, Paul Storks, if you guys want to meet him, he's going to be there. Um, yeah, the, the look, man. We had a civil war and we all won. We all had learning experiences. Um, and what you said is very true, Mr. A, you know, um, the middle ground, right? And one thing I would have to give, although I'm a big blocker, the one thing I, I do uh, commend the small blockers uh, for is because they were aware of the small mindedness of the public. They, 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 their, uh, what they taught Bitcoin to be was very much something that the public could grasp at the time. Very simple message to the digital gold. That's it. Okay. I commend you for that. I also commend them for taking it easy. So they, in a sense, they really borrowed a lot of the, um, kind of like the attitude that the Monero community has in, in, um, being very measured with every step that they take. What I see that they fucked up in is, is that they put all of the energy elsewhere, not on Bitcoin development itself. And at the end of 2023, you see them scrambling, right? You see you see them now like, like BitVM. Have you been following BitVM? Yep. I, I interviewed Super Testnet with Zhao Wei Lu. So BitVM is like, you know, this is how like far away from reality some people are in BTC. So the CEO of Bitcoin Magazine, uh, David Bailey, said if if BitVM became a company, it would be uh, worth it would be tens of billions of dollar in, in dollars in valuation right now. Kind of like he still has that corporate VC mindset. They still don't understand that the value of Bitcoin is not found from the legacy financial system or any other externality. The value of Bitcoin and the way to grow Bitcoin is from within. So there's still a lot of confusion within the small walk blocker world where they now want to take big blocker ideas and use them. They're just scrambling at this point. Literally, Super Testnet came up on, on this show and was like, oh, yeah, I take all my inspiration from Zhao Wei Lu and Script, which is the main dudes on the planet that have been working on Bitcoin to earn completeness on BSV. So, like, you can't say that. You can't say, I take my inspiration from BSV and at the same time say BSV is a scam. They're having a real hard time trying to, like, put that out there. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, there's a lot of, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be kind here in the best way possible, but there's a lot of cognitive dissonance happening in BTC at the moment. Um, and I, I understand that when you look at things from a TA perspective, you, you're you under the assumption that things will be figured out in the market as we go. Um, but when do you, Mr. A, start factoring in all of this cognitive dissonance that is happening within BTC? Because at the end of it, of this, there is a clear question. Is BTC ready for prime time? The answer at this present moment, it's no. It's not. So if it's not uh, ready for prime time right now, then they need to scale right now, be able to scale right now. Moving into a bull market with this ordinals craze, this sh is not going to stop. I'm telling you right yeah. now. And the more that they, because this is the thing, dude, they took the bait. They took the big blocker bait. They're even, they took it to the extent of even doing bit VM and being proud about it. So all they gave us, because you have to understand, like big blockers, dude, we understand BitVM better than the BitVM guys. Like, this is what they need to understand. Like, you're playing in our territory now. You're in our home field. Yes, it, you can call it BTC, but you're in our turf now, dude. You have to understand that, like, Ordinals is big blocker turf. BitVM is big blocker turf. So anything that you do is just giving me more to play with. 
And, and, and what does it mean to play with? It means that I'm going to go into your blockchain and I'm going to create value by creating cool shit. Things that are going to be so irresistible to the BTC end user that they do not, the FOMO is going to be so strong that they're not going to be able to keep their hands from it. Just look at fucking Ordi. Ordi is, honestly, Mr. A, I personally think we're going to see Ordi at $1,000. I, 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 just like we see, like a couple months ago, people were freaking out like, Raph, there's no way Ordi's going to go at to $50 and we're at $50 now. I'm telling you guys, like, I honestly think we're going to see Ordi at $1,000. To me, it makes total sense. When will it happen? I don't know. Sats, look at Sats, dude. I, I, Sats is also evaluated at over a billion dollars right now. Yeah, I think it's very much a repeat of, uh, you know, ICOs in 2017. Are we going to see all these things go absolutely crazy? Yes, no but you understand that every okay. time this goes crazy, it eats away at BTC. It's a vampire attack. And uh, it, it pushes the B, the network to give an answer. The answer is, you know, they're knocking. People are starting to knock on the doors. We need to scale. Yeah, I We need think, to scale uh, now. No, I not think tomorrow. It's no. Going, I think it's good. I think it's going to scale, but it's not going to scale immediately. I think that people like you are far ahead of the curve in seeing it, and the urgency is not as urgent as you feel it is because you're in it. But eventually, it will scale. Uh, and also, you know, when there's the, every time there was you know a flood of things, people freak out about the fees. Oh, the fees are too high. What a scam! Blah 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 blah. And then I go and look at it. Uh, I think the last time there was like a, a fee freak out on Twitter a couple of days ago, fees were like 10 bucks a pop and it was like middle of the day, peak usage. You know, I went back later and it was three bucks. So uh, it doesn't affect me. And I think that the, the network, again, like I said, it self-balances itself. I said that right when scripture went crazy early this year and fees went through the roof. And I said, the network will find a balance. And it did. It didn't find a balance tomorrow, but it found a balance within a few days. And then we're right back to like, you know, single digit uh, transaction fees again. So even without scaling, at one point it becomes too expensive to inscribe and the inscription slow down and things catch up. If it scales up, the cost of inscription is going to go down. The cost of transaction is going to go down. And then if we start filling those up again, they will go up again and then we'll look at it then. But uh, right, but you do the understand urgency, that the urgency is not as urgent as a lot of people make it out to be, and that's fine. But do you that's understand that? Like, but you understand that just as money, as much as money is going into BTC, as fast as it as it comes into BTC, the network, because we have to remember they're not just buying BTC; they're buying assets within BTC. That the moment there is a signal to move out of those assets because the BTC laser-eyed, small-minded folk, they, the moment that they realize that these people will not allow BTC to scale, look at what Max Kaiser is saying, right? Look at what like Luke Dash or uh, Jack from Twitter is saying, right? The moment they realize that they won't allow BTC to scale, all of the investment capital that's gone into ordinals if there, if people try to pull that money out, dude, um, that could cause a catastrophe within BTC. It really could. Yeah, but in order to pull that money out, you need liquidity. <laughs> That's the part I'm trying to get at. It's like you need the liquidity, not only the scaling. We need liquidity to get out, and it's already in. In order to get out, you need liquidity that went out and, and willing to buy outside of that. And it's not there because it's an on-chain economy. So, right. yeah, there's, uh, unfortunately, there's some urgency. The, the on-chain economy urgency. is right now being aided by the exchanges. You know, you have like Binance listing already in SATs, right? And yeah. soon to be um, Track and Bitmap and BMP. Mm -hmm. Like these are, dude, the, the level of 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 intensity that is coming out of btc is is unlike anything i've ever seen because you're not just yeah. you're not just dealing with one of the biggest mistakes that like all uh, big blockers made was to not take into account the 
the the market's desire for hash security and that's something that we've learned mm -hmm. um is is that the market wants the security that comes from hash power that btc has. absolutely absolutely um, even if it's owned mostly by back blackrock now it's still at the very least it's hash power that you and i can start a you know throw up some miners up tomorrow and secure the network with right so it's um yeah so so to answer my question you don't that you think the chart for btc is still it, it, the whole ordinals thing the ocean mining thing the, that to me to you then is like a blip in the radar when it comes to ta is, is that really what you're saying I, absolutely i think it's been a blip in radar and i can take us through our year end bitcoin charts to like show go for it exactly how things have been unfolding awesome man yeah uh, let's do so i will go first into our monthly chart so we can have an idea where we are on the monthly this is going back to 2016 mm -hmm. uh over here and we've had our last bull market move that topped out on the 35th month last time around we had a high in april over here and then a slightly higher high on the 35th month uh, BTC tends to top out the, near the 35th month of a bull market almost every time since its inception, uh, that being the November 28th day of the first halving that marks that. So uh, when I measure four-year cycles, I think that's the key day to be looking at specifically. Give or take three weeks, of course, because it can't be that precise. But either way, there's the week 35. Then we had a bear market bottom, not week, monthly 35. We had bear market bottom on month 37 again just like last time that was another repeat down to the month so again no change in behavior and since then we've been going up and we broke out above the bollinger band here on this month and generally we have about 20 months left of time from where we're at into the next monthly 35 up here so Right now, I have a target at August of 2025, but if we do a repeat of here, it will be October 2025 for 35th month. So, well on trajectory, no changes, nothing. You know, when you zoom out, what has Ordinals done for BTC uh, as far as the price goes? Not a whole lot. Uh, everything is uh, unfolding business as usual on a monthly scale as it should be. I mean, so it's, it's, done, it's done a lot for. Pardon me, Mister. It's done a lot for miners. It's done a lot for. It's done a lot for miners. I'm saying from a for, from a price users, perspective. Yeah, we'll from a price perspective, money. it's from a price perspective, it's still doing exactly what it usually does. So it's okay. not a, a major change. It's not created a parabolic move by any means. It's still exactly where we need to be on a monthly scale. So we'll zoom out to the weekly and but see if that gives us any Mr. clues. Do you understand the the reasoning behind why that is? And the, the explanation that a big blocker will give you is this, is, is that the Bitcoin price is subjected to external factors outside of the BTC blockchain. So it's dependent on the news from Wall Street, dependent on how social media views it, dependent on what the SEC says, dependent on a BlackRock ETF news. I'm actually, I don't think it's dependent on any of those things. How Any so? of those things are not dependent now? on. Of course it is. What do you mean? Nope. Nope. The Explain. chart is the chart and the news is just an excuse for the chart is going to do anyways. Those things do not affect the chart. Sometimes short term they do. Okay. We had the FTX dump, you know, and it created this thing over here, which shouldn't have been there. It actually should have continued sideways and gone over. So it causes a little distortion right here. But overall, when you zoom out, when I go to the monthly, it's not doing anything. Okay, but it what do you say care. that the liquidity that BTC has in the market and the movement of BTC in the market is contingent upon what happens on exchanges? It's not something that's just something happens natively. Whereas the different the dynamic is different when we talk about ordinals. The dynamic is is that uh, the dynamic is within Bitcoin itself within the Bitcoin infrastructure itself. And yes and no, so because when you see what happens when ordinals get listed on a centralized exchange, what does it do to the price? It totally changes it. That's not on-chain. Wait, wait, but, that's been, or, but, or but at go, that point... Already goes on Binance and it goes right. to 50 bucks. Was right. that on-chain? No, that was not on-chain. That right, was just FOMO on an exchange. <laughs> right, but that's because you're leveraging off the debt-based system 
from where the exchange uh, gets its wealth, fiat. Yeah, but but I mean when, that's where liquidity comes from, right? But the moment, but the, um, but yes, sure. Right now in the world as we live in, yes. Mm -hmm. But but the mm -hmm. thing is, is that BTC, the infrastructure within itself, creates an on-chain market that is equity based, where the the assets within the blockchain are within the what we call the equity layer. This is the equity layer. When you move on to a centralized exchange, you're in the debt-based system because now you're connected to fiat directly. The 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 pair in on-chain markets like Unisat or Ordinal's wallet, the pair is already to BTC. BTC is the base pair, not the US mm -hmm. dollar. So you're in a universe completely removed from the dollar. And that's what we find so fucking fascinating because we are in an I mean economy that's our own protected by hash power sure yes it's fascinating only... but but it's not different to me than btc to all coin pairs which is basically to me you know why should you should you be in an all coin instead of btc well because the all coins gonna outperform btc whether the all coins on chain or some exchange doesn't matter should have been already because it's gonna outperform btc probably should probably had some you know some amount of funds in already to catch that wave whether it's already or some other all, doesn't matter. And saying like that's what we should be doing. Cool. But that's an all that's you know already the BTC pair. That's all against BTC. And to me, it doesn't matter what the asset is. If it doesn't want if it's not gonna upform BTC, I have no interest in being in it. I mean, but already I can just be in BTC. BTC. It, so I have some interest in being in it. But otherwise, you can just be in BTC and do better. But this is the thing, Mr. You know? Is that by the time a lot of traditional crypto TA people get wind of Ordi. And if you read what they're writing right now about Ordi, they're talking, they're tracking Ordi from the moment it was listed on the exchanges. They're still using the old crypto boomer mindset. What they should, if they're I mean, really that's on top with of any shit, other alt. Any other alt gets gets mined first and you know for sometimes months before it gets listed on an exchange. Yeah, but it was, you know, it's it was the same it thing. Was, no, but it was, see there is an, a new phenomenon which is that it's on an on-chain exchange trading. On I mean, that's uh, how is that different from a decentralized exchange trading on Ethereum, for example? Or like I mint a token, aka Inscribe, and I put it on an on-chain exchange. And for BTC, we have Ordinal's wallet. For ETH, we have, let's call it, I don't know, Unisat. No, uh, Uniswap. And then that's where things all happen on chain. Eventually, some of those coins get listed on centralized exchanges and they pump like crazy. Like, I, I see the similarities. There are all kinds of things that have happened before. The only difference is, is this time, we're actually inscribing on Bitcoin itself, not some right. other chain. And that's unique. That's the and, first time we've done this. But, but not just that, but BTC itself becomes the biggest digital asset marketplace i mean world. it's the biggest hash rate in the planet i mean it's the most yeah. secure network to be doing so, this in so okay there's no question the, the, how many how many how many btc btc out of the 19 plus uh, million in circulation are held outside of the exchanges the vast majority of them meaning that everyone that holds btc on their own that they're not on exchanges are liquidity Providers, turn switch liquidity providers for the on chain marketplaces within BTC. If they put up the liquidity, if the remain cold sure. storage, I, no think they so, I, I think eventually they they will. So, I think eventually they will. I think they will. Eventually they will, as long as BTC scales on chain. I think everyone, because Mr. A, what, what if you can, if you're going to be hodling Bitcoin, why not make money out of while you hodl? Yeah, if you could do it think, in a private uh, way, if you could do it in a private way, using something like VitBM, where they're using zero knowledge proofs, and now we even know we can use a homomorphic encryption using the on 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 top of Bitcoin, why wouldn't you? At least some just yeah. to play with at the beginning, right? If you can maintain custody, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, with me. you if maintain you have custody. To not you maintain, maintain custody, custody, that's a whole other story. Yeah, you maintain custody um, for sure. All right, so you were saying sorry, yeah. I cut you off there. I get, took yeah. you on a digression. Yeah. So from a weekly perspective, we're also doing really well. Uh, we're doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing off the bear market bottom. 
In fact, well, I was expecting some sort of turbulence around this time, and we actually got it over the past week. We got down as low as 40000 and now we are almost $3,000 later, just a few days later. I think that dip might have been it before we proceed towards that 48K area, which matches the zone over here. So looking good there. I think uh, if we go to uh, the four hour chart, which I like to track a lot, here it is. This is the four hour. Uh, also looking pretty bottomy. We have a reversal, confirmation reversal. Things start to turn around. And we're looking very primed for moving towards that 48K level, which I think was, this wants to go before anything else happens uh, uh, with the price. Now, let's say we are at 48K when the ETF is announced. Uh, in January, we're probably going to see some sort of a $10,000 candle to the upside, maybe up to like 58000 And that will be a sell the news event that will generate a big dump, the first of the classic Bitcoin 30 to 40% corrections that we get in every bull market. And there'll be a nice buying opportunity when it happens. But otherwise, e everything to me is happening on schedule as the cycles dictate and looking very good for 2024 and towards 2025 for uh, what should be a very, very bullish year. So go. looking good for next year and then even higher the year after and uh, with a couple of all coin seasons in the middle to uh, add to the party. So get those yeah. all coin positions in place. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Woo! Bitcoin. So Let's essentially, go. yeah. That's that's where I stand with, uh, with, with Bitcoin and Darrow and everything that's going on. And of course, you know, subscribers to TCV get more analysis on more coins and more ideas uh, as things unfold. And VIX subscribers get even more. So that's uh, there's a lot to digest in this market all the time between what we do and what you do, uh, getting everyone in on the early on-chain inscriptions and things like that. So, yeah, congratulations all all. to everyone. Yeah, you were saying, Mister. I was just saying, oh no, I'm just very stoked on next year. I think we it was a long bear market uh, in uh, 2022. We've had an awesome 2023 of basing and going higher, and now time to get the party started and uh, enjoy number go up, which is perfectly fine for me. <laughs> well, congratulations to all the TCB subscribers that got in on Ordi uh, inscribing. They enjoyed a 60 over a 65,000 X. Woo! Congratulations on those that got in on inscribing Bitmap. You guys are fucking killing it. You guys are at a 100x right now. Uh, congratulations on those that got in inscribing Doji. Last time I checked, you guys, you guys were like way the fuck up too. Um, I forget the, the percent, the, the X you guys are up. Doji, Doge Maps. A lot of you guys uh got in on Doge Maps too. Um, congratulations. Yeah. It's been it's been one heck of a ride. A lot of you guys got into Sats as well on BTC. So, uh, 2023 was a very good year. Uh, thank you, Casey Rotomore, for the gift of ordinals. And so, what do you think is going to happen with ocean mining, Mr. Ray? Let's. I want to ask you to conclude to wrap this up. Uh, I think the only miners left on it would be the miners that are not aware of uh, the revenue they're losing. <laughs> or are compromised by some entities. I'm not going to go name names, are but all the smart them? miners. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> all the smart miners should be pointing their mining equipment at other pools right now yeah. and avoid that thing like the plague. Because if you fuck with samurai wallet, you're fucking with some serious samurais who have their swords out. Yeah, and man. Uh, privacy, privacy should not be messed with. It's not illegal. And you certainly should not be blocking private transactions because you got a thing against inscriptions. That's total utter bullshit. Yep. And Luke Dash Jr. can go eat a bag of dicks. Oh, cat dicks. Yes. <laughs> Yuck. Anyways, all right, Mr. A, um, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you for everything. We all love you, man. You do a badass job. Um, any parting words, people watching? Any parting words? Uh, basically, take opportunity to get your positions in place now. Don't waste any more time and get ready to ride the next year. 
don't try to nickel and dime a couple bucks here and there because you're, you're trying to like buy lower. Just get your position, hold on to it, take profits, and without take profits, and enjoy the ride and don't stress too much in between. That's right, guys. Peace, love, anarchy. Now we are dealing with a possible world war. Some will say we are already in a world war. My condolences and prayers go out to everyone suffering under tyranny. It really sucks. I'm really sorry. But it seems as if people are starting to wake up regarding crypto more and more each day. And so it's in the description right here to read where we give our secret sauce and what we teach our subscribers because things are just that bad. You know, everyone needs this information. People need to know about sound cryptocurrencies that are actually private by default and to know how to properly use crypto.